so there's a few ways that uh, investors get into trouble with self-directed IRAs. Sometimes it might be their own fault. They've relied and trusted in someone who was a Ponzi schemer or was engaging in affinity fraud or some other kind of fraud. And, you know, you can always go against the fraudster, but they often are very flashy to show success that isn't real. And they have great cars that are leased and great homes that have very high mortgages and money winds up offshore and wherever. So that's one thing. If you're in a traditional brokerage account and you transfer money to a self-directed IRA on the recommendation of an actual licensed broker or a registered investment advisor, there may be some liability there by the brokerage firm or the registered investment advisor for failing to detect that the broker or the investment advisor was asking you to transfer money outside the firm and maybe an outside business activity uh, that they are supposed to monitor. So that is one avenue where um, you, you need to be very diligent if someone's telling you to take money out of an IRA because you only have 60 days to get it back into an IRA account before you get taxed on the full amount of the IRA as if it's an early distribution. Certain people who have invested in things like Ponzi schemes and thought, oh, you know, it's, it's IRA money. And, and the Ponzi schemer says, oh, I'm putting it in an IRA account, which is not really an IRA account at all, are surprised. Not only did they lose all of the money, but they've also had a tax liability for, you know, up to 50 percent of the IRA assets, which is just a huge penalty. There are certain tax regs that you would have to go over with your accountant to try to uh, mitigate those uh, damages. Um, and, you know, you can seek to go against a brokerage from an investment advisor if you were directed to do it by a broker. So those are really some ways that you need to look at what's going on with these self-directed IRAs to make sure that you're not getting harmed.